Hi, John Sherry here, your Chief Strategist Officer for another session here at the boardroom. So today we're going to be talking about are you running your business at ground zero or are you planning to eventually get to where you can run your business at the 30,000 foot level? Okay, and I'm not talking about the airplane, 30,000 foot club, I'm not talking about any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about a business model here that I would like for you to be introduced to that could change your life. So we're gonna first start out to explain this by using a pyramid diagram. Um, the bottom pyramid of the pyramid, the base here, is where 95% of all businesses are run. And we're gonna call this ground zero, okay? This is ground Z. Right about here, we'll call this uh, 10K. This is 20K. And this is 30K. So first, let's define these different levels. Ground zero. And I'm speaking and addressing most of you out there who are uh, medical practice physicians, uh, registered dietitians, personal trainers, wellness counselors, anyone that runs a business where you're meeting with people face to face. The challenge with a face to face model is that your limit, your income is limited by how many people you can see in a day. And I am speaking from experience because back in the eighties, I was a sports rehabilitation, personal tra master trainer. I had my own facility and I used to show up at work at, at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock. My first client was usually at 5.30 and I sometimes would not get out of there until 10 o'clock at night. Um, I had staff over the years, but I knew that the only way I was going to make more money is to see more people. Same with physicians. I talk to physicians every day trying to help them move to this model of having a cash-based or fee-based business rather than relying on insurance. And because insurance is being slashed, reimbursements to the doctor, they need to see more patients. And that's a challenge because you have to add more staff, right? So, and besides that, you know, ground zero comes with a lot of other challenges. When you're dealing with people face to face, I know all of you can relate to this, it, you become their psychotherapist. I mean, you hear about all their problems, all their challenges, uh, wondering if they're telling you the truth or not, if they're, you know, if they're taking their meds, if they're, if they're eating right when they're away from you, if they're exercising, all these, you know, are, do they have the family support that they need? Do they have enablers in their life that are pushing them to not allow them to be healthy? These are all the challenges that 95% of you out there face with your business. Not very productive because you're limited. It's only you, maybe a few staff members. What happens at the 10K level? Okay, you add additional staff and you add what's called automation. Automation could be technology. Um, things that allow you to process customers, process transactions much faster, right? That's what it's all about. It's speed, uh, organization, managing your business. The second level besides automation, and it's, it's really a hybrid where, you know, we still always have uh, a little bit of the Z in here. Okay. Still got some of the Z. Here we have a little Z, but besides automation, we've added receivables. And what I mean by receivables is it could be rents. <clears throat> uh, we have a large customer in Southern California. 
uh, they charge rent for, uh, it could be massage therapists, uh, personal trainers, whatever, to come in and use a facility. That is money that's coming in on a regular basis that you don't have to do anything about. Uh, to the medical physician, maybe you're selling uh, programs like 90 day and six month programs uh, where you're you know, taking a payment uh, from the patient uh, on a frequent interval, monthly or, or bi-monthly or whatever, uh, when they come in. So the combination of receivables, a little bit of the ground zero, and you know, a little bit of the auto, um, the automation allows you to be at 20,000 feet. Maybe you're adding new locations. You got additional staff, right? You don't have to be doing all the work because you got another location, you got people doing that, doing what you used to do, you teach them a model, and they're off and running. But there's obviously there's costs associated with that. So what is 30,000 feet? About 12 years ago, I realized in my business that I was only as good as my last month's sales. Uh, my day was only as successful as the last time I, 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 I closed an order or I signed somebody up or I provided some type of service. And then the next day I would start all over. I had appointments, I had cancellations, this constant, you know, flurry of activity. And I decided I needed to put something in place that would generate an income where I didn't have to do anything, nothing. It would just be money coming in. And I took a look at my business and I said, okay, well, this is where I can provide services on a reoccurring basis rather than a big lump sum up front. And so I started to design the subscription, uh, subscription based model. And the way I looked at that was it was almost like the health club model, right? If, you know, all these people, and there's a lot of you out there that may relate to this. You buy a health club membership, but you don't go. Health clubs have survived on this model for decades. And the funny thing is, is it makes a lot of sense, is you can charge a subscription. Maybe there's an activation fee, but you charge a subscription for a service that's small enough to where it falls into what's called a discretionary or disposable income. You know, this could be... Uh, uh, $10 a month could be $20 a month, could be $30 a month, and maybe a $100 activation fee on the front end. But what happens is this monthly fee that's getting charged to your customer's credit cards is what falls within that discretionary and disposable income. And the magic happens when they see that amount and they realize why they signed up for it to improve their health, the fact that they would actually move forward with the cancellation process is a way that they're telling themselves that they quit, that their health is not important. So what happens? They move on. They move on. They move down the statement. They move down the, you know, the, the bank statement or the credit card statement. They're like, I need to use it. I need to get to the gym. <clears throat> and this is a psychology behind making sure the pricing is set correctly. Now, during the subscription, you're still delivering certain services, access to technology, access to people, whatever that may be, but ultimately building a passive income stream where you don't have to go to work every day. Uh, it's, it's, you know, you, have, you don't have to be everybody's psychotherapist. Maybe you don't have to deal with the staff. Um, you know, these types of things that a lot of these folks, the majority of these folks, the majority of you, you're operating down here. I talk to people every day. I got a guy up in the northern part of the country that's just chomping at the bit uh, to sell his, his training studio, his health club, because he's been building up to this model for quite a few years. I've got a registered dietitian who is in her late 50s that is starting to do conventions and trade shows. Uh, she's reselling the same model that she uses with the automation and the technology to other dietitians 
so they can sell to their clients subscription-based models. And this is all about improving quality of life. As you get older, you're going to slow down. You can't function down here. You can't. Build for your future. Focus on the passive income stream. Passive income, meaning you're selling subscription-based services at a price that people can afford, that falls into their discretionary spending, disposable spending, and you don't have to do anything except give them access to technology. We have a number of different tools that'll help you move up to this model and make sure that you check out uh, episode one of the boardroom strategy sessions where I talk about selling to resellers. Because one of the things that's important about this model is the fastest way for you to get up to this peak here is by selling to other businesses. Allow them to be the boots on the street, okay? Let them be down here. Let them eventually work their way up while you reside up here, okay? Reselling subscriptions to consumers is a challenge because a lot of them are very high maintenance. You're dealing with a lot of technical issues. Um, you know, I, I can't log in. I don't understand how to use that. Use this. Uh, my system won't boot. Whatever the, the, the issues are, you don't want to be in the software business. So why not set up resellers to be functioning here They're trying to make their way up too, right? But you're already up here. Let your resellers deal with all that. Let them deal with all the ground zero, 10K, 20K stuff. And all you're doing is supporting them. Would you rather support one person or would you rather support 300 or 100 or 50? The answer is one. That's why selling the B2B model, business to business, is much more powerful than if you were to sell a B2C model. Business to consumer. Business to consumer has a way of pulling you down. It wants to keep you down closer to ground zero because why you're dealing direct with the consumer. Here, you're not. You're shielded because you're only dealing with the reseller. Thank you so much for your time and learning about whether you're operating at ground zero or you're planning on running your business at 30,000 feet by developing a passive income stream. My name is John Shiro. I'm your Chief Strategist Officer. And thanks for watching the boardroom sessions. Have a healthy day.